What's up, everyone? I'm Ayla. I'm Bethann. And this is Let's Talk BL, a boys love podcast. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Series Sundays, where we'll be talking all about one specific series. And this week we have Ingredients. Let's get into it. So Ingredients was a mini series that premiered in 2020 from Central Foods, and it was a 21 episode series and the the lengths of each episode are range from like five minutes to 20 minutes it stars jeff satter as marwin they refer to him as win a lot of times in the series and gameplay as tops and this is their first series together and they'll be seen again here in ken porsche when it premieres as well and yes and they were in he series. she it yeah, he she it yep so um super excited to talk about ingredients. I have so much to say. I know you do too. But as usual, we're going to start with a synopsis from My Drama List. Uh, so here it is. Tops is a young man who has been fascinated by cooking since childhood. He finds happiness in cooking delicious and tasty food with great care. Marwin is a young, romantic, playful, and charming young man. He loves and is dedicated to music and dreams of becoming a world-class musician. His interest in music is so strong that he didn't take care of himself until he came to live with Tops. When the difference between the two becomes the perfect combination, chaos ensues, and the two find themselves deciding between their dreams and each other. This miniseries tells the story of two friends who return to each other's lives during their last year of school to help make one another's dreams come true. <laughs> it is as sweet as it sounds. <laughs> It truly is. So super excited to get into this because I think that people sleep on this one a lot. I think that it doesn't get as much recognition and love as it deserves because it's awesome. And for a web series, I feel like it's really long. You get a lot of good development from this one, from ingredients right. yep. uh, and from tops and win um, who are brought to life by Jeff and Gameplay. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about it. Let's do it. It's such a cute series. We both rewatched it leading up to talking about it. And so it was so fun. Yeah, I came across it randomly on YouTube, I think, and just like knocked it out in a day. I was so excited to watch this because it's, it's put together well. I know that there were moments where I was like, this script writer really like has it figured out because it's so simple, right? Like it, it, you just feel like you're watching like their daily life of that last year of their college experience and, and them living together. And you, it's basically just the two of them and you have like a few people here and there that kind of show up, but for the most part, it's just tops and win. And it's so, it's just so fun to watch as, a peek into like their life and their dynamic as uh win is the musical artist and tops is the chef and it's just i just you know i will gush this whole episode because i love their dynamic i feel like they're just sweet and precious and this was such a refreshing series that didn't have anything to dramatic but there was depth to it that i think was a nice story development in the whole thing yeah i definitely agree i i love ingredients and i i think it's important to point out ingredients is actually the only bl that i have ever rewatched except for my go-to rewatch um, which is love mechanics always on that war agenda um <laughs> But Ingredients is the only other BL I've ever rewatched. And it's so worth every second of every rewatch. What's interesting to me about it is it's supermarket funded, right? It's like, it's a food channel BL, which is so strange because only in the sense that it's so good. Like this is a very professional, very well-developed. The actors are on point. It was filmed during COVID. And so I think that's why it has that setup of just being the two of them, which really gives this mini web series with the shorter episodes, like we said in the beginning, they're you know between five and 20 minutes. In the beginning, the episodes are shorter. But because it's just the two of them and there aren't side stories to focus on, you get depth, you get storytelling, you really connect to them. 
sometimes they make like strange decisions for me personally, but in general, it's, I mean, it's a really, really good series. And I, I think that it's pretty amazing that how well they did for it yeah. being like a cooking yeah. channel show. It, yeah. It's such a, it's such a random series that can't be missed. You got to well, watch and it. The so talent fun. is so good. Not yeah. just from Jeff and gameplay who play win and tops, but from the very few side characters that they do bring in play right. their characters very well. Um, it, it's fantastic. I don't know if you have a favorite side character. I do. And so I think it might be fun to jump into that very quickly. Yeah, go for it. Because it's a quick in and out. My favorite is Hot Neighbor because Hot Neighbor is hot. <laughs> <laughs> I love the introduction of him and like the way that uh, Wynn plays off of him to be to d to develop their romance a little bit yes because you don't get romance vibes so much in the beginning which i think is like also refreshing and nice that it's just like two two guys living together and then they slowly but surely start to develop this underlying tone of like oh there's a little something they do set it up here. so that it feels like a very organic relationship happened that it wasn't right. even though you go, you know going into it it's bl it feels like it wasn't set up because a lot of times in bls you go into it and you're like i see these tropes i understand these two are set up to be together this felt yeah. a little more organic than that which is right. kind of like a breath of fresh air and it's fun and it's different i i really like it yeah it is nice uh, I really liked the friend that they introduced to kind of play the the jealousy. I'm going to pursue your roommate and you need to figure out your feelings. <laughs> and I really love his character because, again, nobody overplays it in this series. And I think that's what's fun is like you do really feel like you're getting like a a sneak peek into someone's life. It'd be like if I just like showed up to hang out with like a group of college students and saw their dynamic. As... It feels a little more realistic, which, yeah. you know, when I hear people talk about, I was recently talking about some, about SOTUS with some people, the people who love SOTUS love it because it feels more real. It feels like the progression of a real relationship. And that's what I feel like is going on with ingredients is that it feels like the progression of just like a real story. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Uh, so with that being said, I do want to talk about like the little things that I found in certain episodes along the way. Uh, the first episode that I really thought was funny and sweet was the YouTube episode where they are trying to film Tops making his like food content. <laughs> and I was like, this felt so relatable. Starting a podcast and like getting into some type of like content creating. I was like bro, I get you. It is, it feels unnatural at first. And then, and someone always is an expert who can tell you how to do it, but isn't doing it, you know? And What's so interesting that, that you like, that you think that was like the, the first one that was really cute uh -huh. is that that episode actually like brings me pain because <laughs> like Jeff is being kind of mean to be or not it, Jeff. Yeah. So Wynn is being kind Little of mean love. to cops. Right. Not tough love. Like he's just fully being mean to him is what's happening. <laughs> Which at that point, like they're right. friends. They're not in a relationship. He like doesn't need to sort of edit himself that way. But right. at the same time, it's like, bro. And this is the same problem. We've talked about this before that I have with type and Tharn type is that it's like, you are so grumpy. How do you even have friends? It's like, Dude, if one of my friends did that to me, if we had a friend that was like sitting on the background of this podcast and was like yelling at me about right. how I was doing it, understanding this is my first time doing it, I'd be pissed. Yeah, true. And so I actually don't love that episode because <laughs> I feel like Wynn is being unnecessarily mean. And I think that Tops is just such a precious character, that, and I think gameplay plays him so well mm -hmm. that it hurts my feelings when Wynn is mean to him. I will say, 
the, that episode does have some sweet moments. I took notes. And so one of my like highlight notes when I was rewatching is that the only part of that episode that I like is when Win figures out that Tops is just nervous, but Tops isn't that way specifically with Win when he's explaining food. And so he looks directly into the camera. So it's sort of like almost breaking the fourth wall kind of situation. Right. And Win looks directly into the camera and says, just look at me. <laughs> Bro, <sweet. laughs> overwhelming. <laughs> God. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> So good. Uh, there was a moment in episode seven where Wynn is looking through a bedside table and there's a copy of Chicken Soup for the Soul that I was like, this is so random. As a, uh, not to date myself, but as a as someone who lived in the Christian world in the 90s, Chicken Soup for the Soul was like a big book that I haven't thought about in years and was like, this is such a random prop that they included in this show luckily that i escaped that laugh. in my everyday life bless it made me laugh uh, th- so my favorite sort of funny moment is <laughs> kind of early on in the season it's it's when they are um playing rock paper scissors to see who's gonna clean the house yeah. and so this is also the episode where they introduce hot neighbor who is hot and win is so jealous he's so jelly lime green jello and i live for it so but i love in in that episode where tops has gone to bring food to hot neighbor and Wynn has realized what's going on and he's very jealous. And so he's like laying on the couch with like his arm in a handkerchief sling and Tops comes back in and he's like, Oh, you're sick. That's what he says. And (laughs) and Wynn goes, no, I just cleaned the bathroom so hard. And like, you know, punch it, like does a fake punch. And then Tops in the most iconic moment in the show, I swear, we love an iconic line. He goes, no, I mean, you're sick in the head. <laughs> Perfect. Like, the iconic. The writing for this show He's, is solid. It's Hobbs so is an icon. I love when the ones that you don't think are going to be savage just have those little savage moments. And so I think yeah. that's what I love about that. That's my favorite funny moment in the whole show, I think. That's so good. Uh, the episode where... Uh, they we're like progressing along a little more and we're like getting uh, a little bit of romance between Tops and Wynn and there's a moment where it the, they've made it clear now that there's something happening and uh, Wynn is super jealous so he like drags Tops away from this party that they're at and they get in the car and they have this like little confrontation <laughs> And it is such a funny moment of like, yeah, this is definitely being filmed by uh, uh, like a food series that like th- you're not going to get any like too risque content. But uh, when is like, I need to prove my love to you and gives him this like aggressive cheek kiss, which I was like, yes, <laughs> bless this child being like, oh. He's frustrated because his friend is like hit on this boy that he now realizes like he's kind of have feelings for. And all he can think to do is like aggressively cheat kiss him, which I thought was so cute and so innocent, but truly like actually fits these characters. Because again, like the series is it's sweet. It's like refreshing content that you can kind of just like put on and enjoy in between the soul crushing drama of <laughs> most of these other BLs. <laughs> I would say my my other just sort of like favorite if we're talking about top moments again comes kind of early on. I really like all the development um that that happens in this series. And so my other tops episode or moment is the episode when Win is you know pumping up trying to get his gains and so he's on this special oh, chicken yeah, breast yeah. diet. I love this episode for a few reasons. The first reason is that I love how stupid they make Wynn look when he's cooking that chicken breast. I mean, he beats the hell out of this thing. It yeah. is torn up. And he only has it in a saute pan. Seriously, Wynn, work he's out your aggression. Pitiful. 
Uh, he, they make him look so stupid cooking uh, that chicken breast. And I kind of love it. Honestly, it fits his character perfectly. I think yep. that Jeff plays it very well as when. Beca- and then further on in the episode, another reason this is one of my top episodes in this in the uh, mini series is because uh, so Tops comes up with this like alternate meal for him that he can eat and still get his gains right, um, and he explains to Win why this is going to be good for him to build his muscle, get his gains on, <laughs> and then he says, "But honestly, I like you the way you are." Oh, my heart. Like, when he says that, like, he's because he looks him dead in the eyes. No shame. Shameless. And he just goes, but honestly, I like you the way that you are. Oh, so love it. Sweet. Love they it. That that episode's sweet. great for multiple reasons. It's funny. And it's cute. You get oh, both. It's very sweet. Uh, another moment that I really loved in episode 17, Jeff, it's, it's where they do the development of uh, when is going to be auditioning for the show, right? I think. And uh, so, so when and tops are sitting at the end of a bed and when is trying to like develop the song and he's singing it at uh, tops. And which by the way is the OST for the series. Yeah, and it's yeah. the world's it's best OST. It. I could listen to it on repeat for the rest of my life. Beautiful. Truly. And he's singing it at, tops and i was like how did gameplay survive this situation like there's there are a lot of moments where jeff goes on instagram and he'll do a live and he will pick fans to sing a song that they uh select and then he'll sing with them on the live and i'm like i could never he (laughs) sings to them by the way it's too much his voice like would just melt me to a puddle on the floor and i would be absolutely useless Useless. yeah so along the same vein this is not one of my top moments this is sort of a a very frustrating moment of the series for me uh when when is auditioning for the scholarship so (laughs) he's developed this song he's decided he's gonna go he's auditioning in front of this panel of judges he sings beautifully like an angel because jeff's voice was sent from the heavens to bless us it is a blessing that we have received on earth and we should all appreciate it is how I feel about it. Yep. Um, So he's in front of these judges. He's saying his song. It's supposed to be the format is that he plays a cover and then he plays an original song. Uh, And so he sings and this judge on the panel looks him dead in the eyes and says to him, she said, I have to pause. I can't even handle it. She says, Looking at Win, which for me meant she was looking at Jeff because she's critiquing yeah, yeah. Jeff's performance. Right. And she says, your voice is fine, but it's kind of plain. I swear, I just about got out of my house, went to the airport, bought a last minute ticket to Thailand <laughs> to find this actress. Don't even know her because I took that as a personal offense to me. That was an act of war, honestly. How? 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 Yeah. I don't understand it. I'm still triggered, clearly. I, I realized that it definitely needed to be there to, like, throw you off the scent that he was going to Throw you get. off of what? We all have eyes and ears. We all know he's going to get the scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was unnecessary to personally attack me like that. Yeah, 100%. It was... It was a very unbelievable moment because... I was like, girl... His voice, voice is solid. You clearly don't have ears. If that's yeah. what you think about Jeff's voice, you, I, I, I can't even explain cool. why it's so personally offensive to me, but it is. I get it. I get it. So then the series wraps up with uh, when getting this scholarship it, uh, uh, opportunity to go to a foreign country. I can't remember where it is. Or I think they, they kind of insinuate that it's somewhere in Europe. Yeah. Uh, and then Win and Tops get together finally and have their like sweet little moment. And after episode uh, 18, there's this episode with a baby with uh, Tops' little brother. 
listen, I work with kids on a daily basis. So like people interacting with kids don't get me because like I just am so I'm around it all the time. But this episode where <laughs> where Wynn is freaking out the whole episode about taking care of this baby and Tops is so confident and is like, you got it. And then they're cuddling at the end, feeding this child and they all fall asleep. And there's a moment where the baby looks at Tops and I was like, same kid, <laughs> same, because it like passes out a little bit. And I was like, I was, yeah, again, just a puddle in their hands because they are just like a sweet, sweet couple and the show is so good. So I think one of the most fun parts about it, and I think is a nice note to end this series Sunday on is that the food actually does play a really big part in the series, which makes sense because it was funded by produced by a a supermarket. (laughs) Um, And all of the recipes are really easy to make. You could definitely recreate them at home. Mm -hmm. So talking about the food, I know the plan was to talk about which one is our favorite, which one to eat, but I'm going to throw a wrench in that. I want to do both. I want to find out which one would you are you, would you most like to eat and which one is the most questionable to you? <laughs> uh, uh, the one that's most questionable to me comes up because I remember them recapping it during one part. There's this like mackerel quinoa situation. That's the one that I want to <laughs> eat. That's hilarious to me. I think that looks delicious. The like lettuce wrap situation with the quinoa and the fish and the like chilies. That sounds delicious. True. It does. I'm into it. I don't question it. That's my number one favorite thing would eat. (laughs) 10, 10. The one that's questionable for me is the like apricot thing with the dry ice, like that situation. Mostly because it looks questionable to me. Like I look at it. What did he put in it? Exactly. Exactly. It was like a meatball, wasn't it? You look at it and you're like, I don't understand what's happening here. I, It's questionable. I'm not saying it's gross. It's probably delicious. Maybe we okay. should try to make it. Here's the funny thing about that is that growing up, I don't know where this comes from, but we used to have this like, I don't know if it was an appetizer or if it was meant to be dessert. This is like speaking to my Southern roots, but my mom would make this peach it was like a whole half of a peach, <laughs> wait for it, with mayonnaise and shredded cheddar cheese. And like that was a thing that we ate. And that's what that reminded me of where it's like a fruit and a thing that's like savory that you're like, I don't. I feel really bad for your mom that you're like dragging her like this publicly <laughs> by uh, a- telling people it. about this weird Listen, recipe. I ate it. It was delicious i think at the time i i have not taken i have not taken it into adulthood i can honestly say i have never replicated it so okay you have appropriately redeemed this like apricot (laughs) meatball situation because that sounds grosser than the apricot meatball so sure i guess i'll give this meatball apricot thing a chance (laughs) you know it's fun uh as far as something that i really want to eat uh the the potato uh it was like a potato puff situation that they make in the car where like the or where they make to take in the car and the friend is like being really rude and being like it's gonna smell it's gonna stink uh that sounds delicious anything i love potato skin so anything that's like fluffy and potato sounds delicious so i'm into Fun. that uh, the other thing we should mention in relation to this series is that Jeff and Gameplay do a web series, like a vlog series, I guess, called Unbagging, where they do different types of food exploration, I guess you could say. And so those are also more fun content because it's just Jeff and Gameplay being silly and talking about foods. And actually, it's like pretty educational at times because they'll like do a whole episode on cheese or like a whole episode on fruit and they'll like do these games. And it's just fun to see extra content between Jeff and Gameplay because they also have a very sweet camaraderie and and 
there's like some subtle flirting that you get that is always fun to see between it's fun cu- it's fun couple work for yeah. sure it's yeah creative. i i would for sure recommend unbagging also if you do not follow jeff and gameplay on instagram i highly recommend it especially for most likely those of you who are listening to this podcast because they both have wonderful english and they both love to speak it in instagram lives yeah so nice. and as mentioned earlier you will get a random notification that Jeff is going live and you'll click it and he will just be looking into the camera singing at you. And it's pretty overwhelming, but also pretty wonderful at the same time. So 1010, it's a good follow. It's true. It's so good. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to add to this series Sunday talking about Jeff and gameplay? We're super excited to see them in Ken Porsche coming up soon. Uh, And Of course, Jeff and his covers on YouTube. Go follow him on YouTube because you will not be disappointed. He does sing a song. He sings a song with Gameplay, who also has a really great voice. Yes. He also has a bunch of covers with a bunch of people, one of which is one of my favorite baby boys in the BL world, uh, Ben's, Ben's Alert. And It's rad because I love N of Love and I love ingredients. And it's like, bam, two por que no los dos, two for the price of one. Nice. Oh, so good. Well, thanks again for joining us on this series Sunday and we'll see you next time.